Ring a bell! Hello everyone and welcome to the Slam Society and welcome to my review show here of MLW Anniversary 24, an anniversary show here for Major League Wrestling from Center Stage Atlanta GA on June 22nd. As you all know, I have been a big fan of MLW since they started doing these YouTube shows and pay-per-views on Fight TV and not just doing fusion tapings. Um, so let's crack on with it. They start the show off here with a package of the previous event, uh, which was called uh, Battle Riot 4. That's right. Uh, and on that show, there was a match where Akira was chokeslammed off the stage through a table, right? And as you may recall, for some reason, the cameraman cut away and shot the ring as Akira was going up and we never got to see the bump. Well, thankfully in this package, they made it up to all of us and I got to see the bump that Akira took through that table, which was very, very cool. Um, Mr. Saint Alaron opened the show, the, the, the idiot himself, um, and the way he's saying his name, Saint Laurent, is just so obnoxious that I love it. Uh, he introduces Paul Walter Hauser um, from Cobra Kai fame. You might remember him from being in the Battle Riot match and what went down with him and Tom Lawler. Um, Paul Walter Hauser grabbed the mic and said, now cut my music. And he said, I just always wanted to do that. And that is so true for anyone who is a wrestling fan. Um, so he's asked firstly, he must be excited to be on sessions by St. Laurent. And he says, yeah. And as he says, yeah, St. Laurent pulls the mic away from him. Every time he asks him a question, he pulls the mic away. Super funny stuff. Um, MSL that is going on about wanting a golden globe. Um, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. MSL is the worst actor in pro wrestling. But you know what? That's what makes it good, okay? He is so, he is such a ham, it kills me. Um, Paul Walterhausen kicks MSL in the gut after having enough of his BS. Then he clocks him and MSL selling is just dreadful, but in a good way. Tom Lawler in his little jean shorts, he rolls up and he lays out Paul Walterhauser with a chair and uh, he gets beaten in the in the gut with that chair, the frame of that chair. And we we're definitely moving forward with this story. There's do, there's definitely going to be a Lawler versus Paul Walterhauser match in future. Um, I look forward to it. Let's move forward. Uh, singles match here: Bobby Fish taking on Adam Priest. Um, so through this match, they're hyping the Opera Cup. This is not an Opera Cup match. Uh, this is. Um, I'll talk about the Opera Cup in a minute. Um, but, you know, Bobby Fish made his entrance and I couldn't believe it. He got a massive pop. I don't know why. And it's nothing against Bobby. He's just, I didn't really think he was a baby face, but uh, he got a big pop. And, you know, it was, this match here was pretty much uh, designed to get Bobby Fish over. Uh, he's lost a few matches in MLW so far, one to Alex Kane. Uh, I know he's lost to somebody else along the line. Um, maybe it was Riddle. I can't remember, but um, he needed a win, obviously, because he's going to be in the Opera Cup and we need to see that he can be a contender. Uh, so he did get the win with a suplex into the corner. Not much to add here. And I would say Adam Priest seems like a good hand. I would keep him around. Um so this Opera Cup, I found out, is like, what, 120 years old. Uh, it, I think the last time it was contested for Stu Hart. The, yeah, Stu Hart, uh, I won that Opera Cup in 1945, and uh, then we decided to get rid of it, get rid of the bastard. But you know what? They've got the original cup, so this is history. It's like the NWA getting Mildred Burke's fucking old title from... 1905 or whatever the fuck, whatever year it was that that belt was in circulation but you know good to see companies paying uh homage to tradition uh so anyway they're celebrating their anniversary we get to see some highlights of cm punk and raven battling on mlw underground several years back 
And by several, I mean like like 2003 era. Um, but when we get to our Opera Cup 2023 first round match, the first one here of the tournament, Davy Boy Smith Jr., who has won this tournament twice, takes on Timothy Thatcher. You know, he's one of those uh, favorites in the indie world. Um, the brackets for the tournament, although I can't remember them right now, they seem good. So tournaments are what they are, right? Tournaments are what they are. Um, AEW do a lot of them. Uh, WWE do them too, but, you know, a bit more seldomly, but their tournaments seem to be, they struggle with people being given time and uh, shenanigans taking place in order to make the tournament as it's wearing on, like be more unpredictable and interesting. I'm not really a big fan of tournaments where they just have matches and someone wins and they move forward. To me, there needs to be a bit more, something to sink your teeth into. And I'll bring this up, the Deadly Game Tournament of Survivor Series 1998, the first ever wrestling pay-per-view I ever saw. And every single match had some stakes. Every single match had some sort of like story being driven through it. And, you know, it affected the outcome of the match and what was going to be happening moving forward. That's a tournament I like. Um, so again, a tournament is what it is, right? Uh, MSL's back out there again on commentary as usual. Very welcome. Wish he would bring up this thing with Contra still hasn't addressed it since they, you know, beat up guys in their group and they had to like relinquish the tag titles, which I thought was ridiculous. And I still don't like that. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, um, I was, on the AEW Reddit and they were talking about the Owen Hart tournament and how Jeff Jarrett cut that great promo. And some people were saying Jeff should win the tournament. Jeff should win the tournament. Then someone else was like, well, maybe Davey boy Smith jr. Should be put into this tournament. Um, and he should win it for Owen. And I saw a fan call Davey boy Smith jr. Mid because you remember that time MJF said the word mid so now, like, fans take that and, and use that in their vocabulary. Fuck you, bro. Okay? You, you 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 get in there. You get in the ring, bro. You get in the ring and you wrestle, okay? And then you wrestle Davey Boy Smith Jr. And then you tell me if you think he's mid. I guarantee you if that wrestling fan had a lesson from Davey Boy Smith Jr. Getting in the ring, learning how to bump, learning how to work, learning how to chain, I guarantee you within five minutes that guy will be like, you know what? I was wrong about Davey Boy Smith Jr. Thank you. Hate toxic fans like that that judge people um, based off whatever, whatever kind of wrestling it is that they like. Oh, sorry, does Davy Boy Smith Jr. not go off the top rope or do dives to the outside? Fuck you, bro. Thatcher took hard was took hard. He took hard, wicked hard. Took charge with some holds, but we know Bulldog is going to win this. Um, they had a good match, and I have to give them props for you know making it feel like more of a stalemate tit for tat but great tiger bomb from uh davy boy smith jr for the win flush perfect uh we get a package for the feud with selena de renta and caesar duran then we get footage of satoshi kojima winning the mlw world championship for the first time over jerry lynn many moons ago then we come back from uh that package and we see akira backstage um, and he has a dog in his hands and Satoshi Kojima and uh, Okamura are patting the dog. And just watching Satoshi Kojima do anything is funny to me and entertaining. You could have Kojima, you could have Kojima with an ironing board, ironing his gear. You could have Kojima going through a drive through to order a meal at McDonald's. You could have Kojima do anything and I will be very entertained by it. Moving forward, National Openweight Championship on the line. Next bad dude, Tito taking on Jake Crist. Um, I honestly feel like Ricky Shane Page's title reign seems like such an afterthought after he had such a long reign, didn't lose it to Akira, who he was feuding with, and then seemingly lost it in a random kind of matchup with bad dude Tito. I mean, if you want to get Tito over, that's cool. But what about RSP? What about what that title reign was? Um, I think, if anything, Akira should challenge Bad Dude Tito here because he should be ranked as a contender, right? We're going to look at it literally. 
And plus, Jake Crist also lost to um, what's his name? Oh my god, how have I forgotten his name? Ryan, uh, Ryan, um, Brett Ryan Gosling. Excuse me, <laughs> I was going to say Ryan Gosling. Obviously, that's the gimmick. Um, <clears throat> so, like, I don't. Sometimes with MLW, I don't understand how people get title shots, uh, but it is what it is. Okay, it's all right. I need to stop taking it so seriously. Um, I also think Contra is not being talked about enough. Uh, again, World Titan Federation never once addressed it. Where's Court Barra talking about the situation, how he was attacked? It just seems to be uh, have been, you know, fallen by the wayside. And no updates on where Richard Holiday is. We need updates. Come on. If this were real, you would be updating people on, you know, the whereabouts of Richard Holiday. Anyway, uh, BRG cost Chris the match here. And of course, Tito went over, which was to be expected. Let's move forward. Uh, Caesar Drangas interviewed by Marquez backstage. Uh, Caesar, he wants the best for Selena. He says he's a good father and he wants a Father's Day gift. We see a shot of the crowd of C.W. Anderson, former member of the Extreme Horseman and the original MLW. What's up, bro? Again, don't know why you blocked me a messenger. We had a great interview once upon a time. I wanted to get you and Lou and Billy to do a, a new dangerous Alliance reunion kind of interview. Now my podcast is over, but still don't know what it is that I did wrong. Um, anyway, oh, so I pitched an idea for him to have a feud with Tim Storm in the NWA. Like we were talking about it, bro. We were talking about you working the NWA. Anyway, Riddle uh, has an interview backstage. He's attacked by Sammy Callahan. He is obsessed with Matt Riddle. Um, we get uh, Bobby uh, coming out on commentary. That's uh, Bobby Fish. And we have an Opera Cup match. Uh, Ikiru Kwan taking on Akira. I don't have many notes on this one. Um, I knew Akira was going to win. They had a good match. Not sure if Kwan should be losing this soon after being revealed as a member of Contra. But some people... Don't get a fairy tale start. It's true to life. Things like this happen. Uh, but again, just a tournament match here. And I can't really talk. I'm not going to sit here and talk about moves. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the 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 specky things that took place and go blow by blow. That's just, I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but Akira won this and he should have won this. Tom Lawler is uh, losing his shit over uh, Paul Walter Hauser. We know that this is leading to something down the road. Anyway, MLW middleweight championship on the line here in the next matchup. Mystico, the champion, defending against Star Jr. So the crowd was super into Mystico here. I think he's done a great job as champion. I've been more impressed with him here than I was when he was Sin Cara. I think he's great. Um, sometimes with Star Jr., like he's all right. He's all right, but then there's other times where I'm like, you know what, that looked a bit fake. And I wish that this was sponsored by Prime. I actually like Prime. I actually like it. It's a little sweet sometimes, but, you know, I don't need things sweet. I'm sweet enough, mate. Um, So Mr. Coke, like, defies gravity. He is one of a kind, this guy, as far as I'm concerned. The way he moves, the way he uh, utilizes... um you know, certain evasions and things of that nature, the way he has his head scissors takedowns and he somehow lands on his feet. He's unbelievable. Um, and of course he wins by tap out to retain. Good stuff. Next, a three-way ladies matchup here. Miyu Yamashita taking on Danny Jordan and Jazzy Yang. And her dad, Jimmy Wang Yang, is in the crowd. Um, so she's quite new to the industry uh she's you know a rookie and she looked good out there she did well uh, but the one thing i want to say is like <clears throat> seems more often than not in a lot of wrestling companies there's always multi women's matches there's always more than one woman in the match um i think honestly some of these companies need to try a little bit harder to make it a little bit more interesting this is a cold match that is a three-way match and I've never been a fan of cold three-way matches. Three-way matches are only really supposed to happen and they were designed to happen because we couldn't find a number one contender. 
and it's neck and neck with three people and they just got to put them in the match. There's certain situations that have taken place that have led us to those places, you know? Um, but anyway, as uh, is expected, Yamashita got the victory and I guess she will be challenging Janai Kai very soon. Sammy Callahan with another promo. He's obsessed with Riddle. This is going to be a thing going forward. I expect this to go five to six months in length. Uh, Gary Jester, Jester, I thought it was Jester, like a, like a clown. No, no, a Jester, Gary Jester. He's been someone that's worked behind the scenes in pro wrestling for many, many years. Uh, he gets given a bit of a tribute here. Um, he deserved being given some respect here. And it's always good seeing people from behind the scenes being given some respect because a lot of the time they get ignored. Then we get highlights of Terry Funk, Dusty Rhodes, and Steve Carino in their three-way bunkhouse brawl from many years ago. This show makes me think to myself, although it's their anniversary show at the same time, it feels like a transitional show. It feels like we're just moving from one show to another, and this is just like the thing that was in the middle, and the next show might be a bit more important. Anyway, main event time here, Mads Krul Kruger taking on one called Manders in a ball rope match. Uh, Kruger makes his entrance. Contra make their entrance. He sends off his Sentai squad. I thought they said hentai. <laughs> um, Manders jumps Kruger early on here. Excuse me, I just had to cough. Um, soon into the match, we have the spot with a ball rope match where one guy's on one side of the ring post. The other guy's on the other. The rope is still inside the ring, though. And, of course, Manders got pulled into the ring post. And I was like, he's about to get cover. And he did. That is me being a uh, a wrestling fan that um, has the knowledge, right? Um, you know when these things are going to happen. You know. They, they, they'll pull away of the camera. And I could see Manders in the background kind of like giving himself a little bit of a, a little bit of a nick. Um Again, we need more words from management and the roster on Contra's actions. Um, there was one point of the match where Kruger just belted Manders in the back with the belt, not the belt, the rope, and the cowbell just smacked Manders in the spine. Um, yeah, I, I actually laughed because of how messed up it looked. <laughs> um, Manders hit a massive superplex off the top rope through a table, which... That got a great pop. That was a great spot. Uh, and I thought at this point, this is match of the show. Janai Kai came in with a sick kick to the head of one called Manders. And then Kruger beats Manders as we should be seeing here. So Contra, um, they're celebrating here. Uh, referee goes to hold up Maz Cruel Kruger's hand in victory to, you know, because that's what referees do. That's their job. He's, here is your winner. And what does Kruger do? He grabs the referee by the scruff of his neck and throws him to the outside of the ring. And like the referee gets all fucked up on the outside. And I love stuff like that. It is hilarious to me seeing referees getting thrown around for no reason. The guy did nothing wrong. Contra then get in the ring. They beat down Manders, stomp a mud hole in him. Then he gets the infamous club to the head and he is wrapped up in that rope and dragged backstage. Matthew Justice is backstage. He comes in for the save as Manders is being dragged back there. And Contra attack him. And he is made to watch. Uh, sorry, Manders is made to watch Justice being pummeled. I thought we were about to go off the air. But, of course, once again, we cross to Caesar Duran, who is backstage. Selena shows up. Uh, and he gets up off the couch. He walks over to her. And he's asking for a Father's Day gift. And this is great stuff, bro. This is great stuff, okay? Because he is being evil. He's being cruel to his daughter. It was revealed that he's her puppy last show. And now the tables have turned on Caesar because now he can't be horrible to her or want harm to come to her. Because his Father's Day gift was to reveal that she's pregnant and she showed her belly. Bro, great way to end the show, seeing Caesar Duran, that evil guy, smile over it, you know, realizing, whoa, holy shit, this is, this is actually what's important in life. 
I like stuff like that. That was really cool. So great way to end the show. Still loving MLW right now. I would I would give this a 7 out of 10, but that's middle of the road for me. You know, wasn't bad, wasn't amazing, but it was good. It was a good show. It was a fine show. So um, thank all of you out there for joining me here on the Slam Society. Sorry, I'm not reading any tweets today. Um, I've got too much to do this evening, but... Um, Nice quick review here of MLW Anniversary 24. Please like, please subscribe, please just check out all our other stuff on the channel. Go to Slam Society Extra. It is our new sister YouTube channel, which has our non-wrestling stuff on there. Funny gaming stuff. You're going to bloody love it. I'll see you all next time, California. And I'll see you down the road. Thank you. <clears throat> A frog in my fucking throat. <laughs>